Over. And this is our project, the temperature-related effects of marine debris on seaside ecosystems. So every year, around 14 million tons of plastic are dumped into our oceans. After about a month, 80% of those plastics end up on beaches. Coming from an island in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by beaches, our environments are most at risk for these subsequent effects. Direct impacts such as ingestion and entanglement have been researched. However, more indirect, indirect impacts such as changes to the physical thermal profile of sediments have yet to be further speculated. These changes could have a direct impact on beach and dune environments. Our project intended to test the impacts of these physical changes of the sand um, as a result of plastic being mixed in with these beach sediments. So when you think of Hawaii, you think of sand, beaches, you think of turtles. And this was the species that inspired our project initially. Seeing as turtle, there are a lot of species of turtles that are threatened or endangered on the islands, we decided to further research their population dynamics because turtles are actually sex um, temperature determinant. So changes in the sand could have a direct impact on their population. And in addition to turtles, we also looked at how Changes to the sand sediments could affect marine vegetation uh, as far as their early stages of growth and plant development grows, as well as other crustaceans within the sand. Our objectives were to determine the effect marine debris has on the thermal profile of beach sediments and to find the thermal diffusivity with respect to environmental factors and identify possible implications of thermal profile of marine debris infused sand. So what thermal diffusivity is, is thermal conductivity in respect to the heat capacity, which in civil terms is just the rate at which something, the rate at which heat spreads through substance in, substance in respect to how fast it heats up. Our questions were, what are the impacts on the physical properties of beaches as a result of plastic pollution in beach sediments, as well as what is the indirect impact of plastic pollution on local marine ecosystems? All right, and with everything that she just said in mind, we went into our first test day on 9-16-23. Uh, the main goal of this day was just to become familiar with the main thing that we used to gather our data, these temperature loggers. We wanted to know how they work, uh, the data that they give back, and how we can process that data. So what we did is we set them up to record one hour's worth of data in one of our test sites, which is Hilo Bay, um, kind of like by the beach of where we live in Hilo, Hawaii. And also, these loggers were set to record at a rate of one hertz, which just means that every second it would record one log of how or the temperature uh, at that time. So every second it gets the temperature. And after that day, it went really good. Uh, we learned a lot about these loggers, how they worked, uh, how to process all the data, all that good stuff. And another thing that we noticed is that actually these loggers are not very good at telling absolute temperature, but they are good at telling relative temperature. So they can tell if the temperature rate rises or decreases by one degree or two degrees, but they can't tell to, um, they can't give a very accurate reading of what that temperature is. So knowing this, we changed our study to look at how the temperature changes, not so much the absolute temperature of the sediment. Another thing that we have to watch out for is the shade. In our test, we noticed that the shade started to come very close to our test, um, our test site. So in the real test, we have to watch out for that. Knowing all of this, we went into our prep day, the day before our experiment. This is on a Friday. We're going to start our experiment on the Saturday of 9-23. We made some important decisions on this night. Uh, one of the biggest ones being this first one here. We decided to put six of these temperature loggers per hole. Um, we put two at 40 centimeters depth, two at 20 centimeters, one at five, and one on the surface. The reason why we did this is because we could use this data at these different depths to plug into some of our equations later and come up with the thermal diffusivity of the two different holes. Um, we'll talk more about that later though. Another thing that we determined is the plastic type we will be using. We decided to use LDPE plastic, also known as low density polyethylene plastic, just because it's one of the most commonly uh, manufactured plastics out there. Another thing that we decided is to use a mass percentage mixture instead of a volume percentage mixture. Uh, this is because it's very difficult to get an accurate reading on the volume of marine debris, but it's very easy to get a mass reading on it. So that's why we did that. And lastly, we came up with the hole size here, um, just how big we have to dig out those holes Put those temperature loggers in. We decided on 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters, and if it should say 50 centimeters deep. I'm sorry about that error. Um, but yeah, that's how deep we decided to dig the holes. Uh, next, we calculated how much plastic we would need for that volume of sand. Uh, 
So we just portioned out all the plastic we would need in a bucket, and we prepped the plastic as well, so um, we portioned it out once again. And lastly, we established a method for cleaning up and setting up our experiment. For setup, we wanted to make sure it went smoothly, made sure that everything's controlled, the experiment went well, and when we cleaned up, we wanted to make sure we didn't leave any plastic on the beach, we didn't want to pollute the environment any further, uh, so that's why we did that. This is a picture right here on the side, oh, there's a laser pointer. Uh, oh, never mind. Uh, there's a picture on the side there of us setting up the experiment on the beach. This is very early in the morning, around 5 a.m. Uh, that's because we wanted to get in there before the sand started to rise in temperature when the sun came out. Uh, we set up in Hilo Bay, once again, near our hometown, and our first hole was filled with all sand, that was our control, and we would compare the readings from that to our second hole, filled with sand and plastic. Again, we used our prepared uh, portions of sand and plastic to make that mixture. After digging the holes and starting at 6.15 a.m., we were all good to go. And so over the next two days, we recorded data at the site. Here's some just some cool pictures of where we set up our experiment. Um, nice that we went out early, got a very nice view of the sunrise. And after the two days, we got about 40 hours of usable data. What we noticed in the graphs is exactly what we were looking for. We saw a phase shift between the different depths of, uh, we saw a phase shift in the temperature between the different depths of our loggers. Uh, we also saw a difference in the amplitudes of these temperatures. We will a little bit more into that later. Another thing that we saw is that the range of our temperature was either plus or minus one degree. So it would either go up by one degree Celsius or down by one degree Celsius, depending on the time of day. And again, we measure relative temperature not absolute temperature, which is just what uh, temperature our novel is. Lastly, what we observed on that bottom picture there is that one of our holes actually retained water quite a bit. It rained on the first day of our experiment and we noticed that the water was retained. So this is something we had to know going into our second experiment. We had to know how weather conditions could affect it and we definitely had to make sure that uh, it didn't rain on the second, or it didn't rain sometime during the second day, or second test that we ran. Uh, any conclusion from all of this, Another thing we took into account from this first test is that, as you can see in that top right graph, that graph actually shows the temperature throughout the entire experiment. Uh, so, as you can see, it's not really, uh, it's, you can see the upward trend, in, and what, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for something that's more flat. And the reason why we had the upward trend is because we used cold sand when we originally set up the experiment. As I mentioned, we set it up early in the morning. So the sand that we actually put into the holes was colder than the sand surrounding it. So during this first day, as you can see, the data is still in that upward trend. It was, uh, the temperature was still reaching equilibrium, which is something we had to take into account going into our second experiment. All right, and with that, I'll pass it off to Ava. Right, so with our previous results and with the conclusion that we draw from our previous test, on this second test, we decided to get around five days of data so that we had more information. And uh, our location was across the island at the beach we call Puko Beach. And we achieved this location through our advisor. He had met a connection with someone he worked for, worked with in the past. And so we, were, we had access to this nice, more private, secluded beach because the first time around, we actually had to stay in Hilo. We had to stay at our hometown beach and we had to watch the loggers throughout the day because there was people walking across the beach like throughout the day. So we actually had to camp and sit by the loggers and watch them. So that was kind of humbug. But yeah, that was the nice thing about that was the nice thing about this area was that you know we assumed that it would be less um, populated. However, as you can see, we rode short setback right underneath that first point, and that's because um, on that fifth day when we came, we had to drive two hours across. So we, had to, we had made a two-hour drive across the island to go pick up our experiment, and we found out that it had been tampered with. So the sign we had actually received an email telling us that. Um, one of our signs explaining what the experiment was, it had blown into the water, shock, so we ended up checking it out. Maybe the data was still salvageable, however, it wasn't, and so it was an easy fix. We just let it rest for three more days, so what was supposed to be five days of data turned out to be eight, but that was okay. We just reset it and then drove back and then drove back again to um, collect the results. And luckily, it was during fall break, so we didn't miss school for that. But yeah, we had the same setup and everything. Other than that setback, we were fine. But noticeable differences in the sites, Puoko versus Hilo Bay. Um, well, first of all, the color, right? But there was a larger grain size in Puoko, less water in the sand, and also, again, a lot farther away. And yeah, here are just some pictures um, of Puoko Beach from that first setup. It's uh, really nice for sunsets and all that stuff. And yeah, here is the final setup. So this was before it was tampered with, keep in mind that 
We have that white sign over the wooden board. The wooden board says experiment in progress. That white paper just has a description of our project. But yeah, first goal has the plastic, second one has no plastic. And yeah, here are some turtles on the beach. So quite nice. And here are the results with Ryan. So to analyze our results, we looked at two variables, the amplitude and the phase shift. And basically what the amplitude is, is the difference between the peak of the graph and the average. So you can see a graph that has a, a, that looks more like this is going to have a high amplitude, while a graph that looks more like this is going to have a low amplitude. And the phase shift is the other one, which is the difference in time between the peaks of the graph. So you can see the green, uh, the green graph has a peak about eight hours before the peak of the blue graph here. So it would have an eight hour phase shift. The blue graph would have an eight hour phase shift. And then using these two equations, uh, using these two variables, we were able to use these two equations to calculate the thermal diffusivity for each of the holes. And basically what these two equations are saying is uh, the, the higher the thermal diffusivity, the more the higher the peaks are going to be and the earlier the peaks are going to happen, as opposed to the lower the thermal diffusivity with uh, smaller peaks and a later, um, more delayed peak. And then using these two equations, we're able to calculate the thermal diffusivity for each of the holes. We noticed that the plastic consistently had a lower thermal diffusivity than the non-plastic holes. And we also noticed that Puoco had a lower thermal diffusivity than Hilo. And we'll go into a little bit more about this in a minute. But first, we want to show you a little bit about what, uh, what we're seeing between the plastic and the non-plastic holes. So first, uh, you can see how the plastic has a a uh, smaller amplitude and is phase shifted about two hours to the right of the non-plastic hole. And what's really interesting about this and the way the equations work is this two hour shift also translate over a day can translate up to the yearly scale. And this two hour shift is about the same as a one month shift on the yearly scale. So these results um, had differences obviously and they were caused because plastic in itself has a lower thermal diffusivity than sand by about a factor of 10. And between Hilo and Kuoko, there is composition differences. Uh, Kuoko has much more calcium carbonate, while Hilo Bay has a lot more basalt. And we also noticed that Kuoko had more air in the sand, which, and air is an insulator, so Kuoko is probably going to have a lower thermal diffusivity because of that. So in conclusion, marine debris lowers the thermal diffusivity of the sediment, and that effect varies based off of the sediment type, including the grain size and the material. And this can cause many major effects to beach ecosystems, including turtles with uh, temperature, temperature sex determination, and seeds that only germinate at a specific temperature, as well as other marine life that reside in their beaches. That concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening. Mahalo, Mahalo, Mahalo. Thank <laughs> you.